In this video, I want to introduce the idea of linear independence. So let's say that we have a vector set that contains v1, v2, v3, all the way to vn. And we want to decide whether or not this set is linearly independent. So if these vectors are linearly independent, then this equation must hold only if c1 is equal to c2 all the way to cn if all of these c coefficients are equal to zero. So basically what this means is we can restate this as a set of vectors is linearly independent if each vector cannot be written as a combination of the other vectors. So basically linear independence implies uniqueness of each vector. So if we consider the following matrix, we can decide if these columns of the matrix, V1, V2, V3, we can decide if these columns are linearly independent by inspecting whether or not a single vector can be written as a combination of the other vectors. So in this case, to demonstrate my point, if we take 2 times V1, which is 1, 0, negative 2, and we add V2, which is 2, 1, 1, what we get is 2 plus 2, 0 plus 1, and negative 4 plus 1, which is equal to the vector 4, 1, negative 3. And we recognize this vector as V3. So what we can say is that vector 3 can be written as a combination of vectors 1 and 2. Therefore, this set, v1, v2, and v3, are linearly dependent. These are not linearly independent because we can write one of the vectors as a combination of the others. So it's not always practical to check every single vector to tell whether it's a combination of the other vectors. So instead what we do is we row reduce a matrix into an echelon form and then we select those pivot columns as the linear independent set. So what I mean is if we go back to this example from a previous video I showed that we had a matrix A and I showed that it was row equivalent to matrix B which is a row echelon form of A and we showed that these first non-zero entries of each row were the pivots of this matrix. So in this case, these pivots lie in these columns, which are column one, column two, and column four. So if we take these columns and we come back to our original matrix that we were interested in, we can select columns one, columns two, and four as the set of linear independent vectors. So let me write this out. We have a linearly independent set, and we can write this as the set containing the vectors 2, 2, 1, 0, 3, 1, and negative 1, 0, 4. So what this means is that if we have a pivot column in a reduced form, then it will be a pivot column in the original matrix, which means that it is linearly independent with the other vectors. So let's take a look at this vector, which we don't have circled. So this, this vector, 4, 4, 2, is not a pivot column, and therefore it is not linearly independent with these vectors in this set. So what that means is that we can construct this vector v3, we can construct v3 from a combination of the other vectors, and that is why it is not a pivot column. And if we take a look at vector uh, 1, if we come back to this vector right here, v1, we notice that we can express v3 equal to 2 times v1, which is equal to 2 times 2, 2, 1, which is equal to 4, 4, 2, which is V3. So what this means 
is that we can write v3 as a combination of the other vectors therefore it is not linearly independent with the other vectors and that is why it is not a pivot column and that is why it's not included in this set that I have right here so often what we do if we want to determine the linearly independent set of the vectors what we do is we row reduce we find the pivot columns and we take those corresponding pivot columns of the original matrix as the linearly independent set so to build more on our intuition behind linear independence, let's consider this example. So right here we have a two-dimensional coordinate axis, x, y plot. So v1 points along this line, which is the x-axis, and v2 points along this line, which is the y-axis. And these two lines are different directions, which means that we cannot satisfy this equation that we started the video off with. We cannot satisfy this equation with a non- 0, C1, and C2. And that is because as we, as we multiply uh, a vector, all it does is scale it along the line that it, um, it points along. So there is no combination of V2 that would make V2 point in this direction. So therefore, we can say that the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution. Therefore, we know that these are linearly independent. And we can further build on our intuition behind this by recognizing that V2 has a component in the direction that V1 does not have a component in. And similarly, V1 has a component in the direction that V2 does not have a component in. Therefore, they cannot be the same line, and therefore they are linearly independent. Now, if we throw in a third vector, let's say that we have a third vector, V3, and it is equal to 1, 1. Now each of these vectors point along their own unique line, but they are not linearly independent because we can express V3 equals V1 plus V2, which is equal to 1, 0 plus 0, 1, which is equal to 1, 1, which is the same thing as V3. And if we consider what we talked about before about the pivot columns, if we were to write these vectors in a matrix, we would have 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, where these columns are V1, V2, and V3. And we recognize that this is a row echelon form. So what we do is we start with the first row, we pick the first non-zero entry, and we move down to the next row and pick the next non-zero entry, and there's no more rows to go down. So we see that we have two pivots and two pivot columns. And since V3 is not a pivot column, then we know that V3 can be written as a combination of these two vectors, V1 and V2. Another thing that I want to point out is that for a two-dimensional vector, so in this case, we're working in two dimensions. Uh, each vector has two entries, an X and Y component. So we're, these are two-dimensional vectors. The most pivot columns that we can have are two because we only have two rows. So that means that if we have two linearly independent vectors, like in this case, V1 and V2, if we have two linearly independent vectors and we throw in a third vector, like V3, then no matter what, V3 is going to be linearly dependent on V1 and V2. So this leads us to a theorem that I'll write down, which is the maximum number of linearly independent vectors in Rn, where Rn represents uh, the dimension that we're working in. Like in this case, we are working in uh, two-dimensional real numbers. It has x and y component. So therefore, this is going to be R2. And this just continues on for, for more dimensions. So the maximum number of linearly independent vectors in Rn is n, because there are only n rows. Therefore, there can only be n pivot columns at most. And this makes sense because we, we must recognize that any point that we pick, whether it's right here or here or here, any point that we pick in this coordinate axis can be represented of a, of a combination of two of these vectors.
For example, if we take V1 and V2, this point right here can be accessed by going up V1, up V2 in this direction and over in V1 direction to here. So that means that this point can be represented by this vector. And similarly, we can represent this point right here that V3 points along as by going up V2 in this direction and V1 over here. So that means that V2 and V1 span R2. If we have n linearly independent vectors in Rn, then this means that these vectors span this space. So in this case, since V1 and V2 are linearly independent, they span R2, since they are both two-dimensional, and therefore any other vector must be a combination of them. Therefore, we can only have two linearly independent vectors, which kind of brings me back to this point. So the first thing that I want you to take from this video is that row operations preserve linear independence. And this is significant because it allows us to row reduce a matrix to be able to find the pivot columns and then take those same columns of the original matrix as the linear independent set. So pivot columns equals linear independent set. And the non-pivot columns are always going to be multiples of vectors in linear independent set. The second thing that I want you to take from this video is that there can be a max of n linearly independent vectors in Rn. And these n linearly independent vectors in Rn are said to span Rn. And finally, I want to draw the connection between the original equation that we started this video off with, which was this equation right here. And we said that a set of vectors is linearly independent if the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution where all the scalar coefficients are equal to zero. So essentially what we're doing, whenever we row reduce a matrix to find the pivot columns, what we do is we're actually solving, we're actually looking for solutions to this equation. And if there is a solution to equation that is not the trivial solution, then that column will not be a pivot column. However, if the only solution to this equation is the trivial solution, then those will end up being pivot columns. And the vectors and the pivot columns are all linearly independent. So anyway, thanks for watching. I know this was a lot of information, but this is an important uh, topic and we will be using the, these ideas quite a bit in the future.